I really love spending time outside in nature, feeling like disconnected from all the distractions that we face just living in an urban world. I am working on the wood duck project at UC Davis. Since it is a nesting ecology project, we have about 100 nest boxes and I need to know the status of every box throughout the nesting season so that when the time comes to hatch, I can be there within the first 24 hours before all the ducklings leave the nest. And if there are new eggs in the nest, I will make sure to mark all the eggs so I know how many eggs are in the total clutch size. We try to process every single duckling of every single nest. Probably the cutest things that I've ever handled and, and interacted with. They're just tiny little puff balls. They chip a lot, chip, 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 chip kind of thing. Um, and yeah, it was just a really, really cool and fun experience. So we actually collected them as eggs um, from wild nests and, and brought them in, incubated them, hatched them out. And then I did a really close kind of observational study um, as they developed. So right now we're just closely monitoring how they interact with each other and whether or not that influences how much they eat or if they have access to nesting resources. I'm a graduate student at Humboldt State University. I work for the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. In the 1980s, you'd ask somebody who lived out here, they would say bears don't exist here. And that has changed in the last five to 10 years. We're really just interested in learning more about this population that we have no information on. We're out here to do a genetic mark recapture study that will give us some good information on abundance and density throughout the range and seasonal habitat associations. Hopefully we can get in the dens and learn a little bit more on cub survival. How many cubs are they having? How many of them make it into the den for the second year? We're just getting started and those are just a few of the big picture ideas that we're hoping to evolve this project into. When I'm doing wildlife field work is just like Finally. I've loved animals all my life and I knew that I wanted to study them. And so when I'm holding a porcupine, it's a wild animal. No one really gets to do this. It's really a dream job and, and I get to do it. My project is asking this novel question about porcupines and their movement and fine scale habitat selection involving going out and finding porcupines that have collars put on them and see where the animal's going. And so I'm using that GPS data along with habitat level data. And then I'm also exploring the idea that an animal can use knowledge that was intentionally gained in the past to inform selective decisions in the future. The role I played within my immediate family was different from the role that my male cousins played or my brother played or my dad played being in fishing and um, hiking and camping. And so very early on, I had this idea. I wasn't invited in those spaces. And it really wasn't until I found my path into wanting to, to do wildlife work that I realized that that kind of put me at a disadvantage. I didn't know anything about field work. I didn't know anything about taxonomy. I always second guessed myself, like, am I even good enough? Do I even have experience to do this? Or do you really have to just be born into it? But anyone can really do anything if they set their mind to it. Growing up, and even still, I, I've lived with a speech impediment my entire life. Ever since I was four or five years old, I've had a stutter. If you had told me back when I was in high school that I'd now be a college professor teaching large classes of students, um, I wouldn't have believed you. Our skunk project's been going on for five years now. We study a wide variety of predator-prey interactions and the evolution of anti-predator behavior regarding how prey fear their predators and how they choose to defend themselves. Science is enough of a barrier for anyone, so if you have extra barriers Beyond that, it makes it that much harder. So one of my jobs is to try to lift those barriers and make it easier for students to find the success that they want to have. We need to be able to relate to a diverse audience to get more people to care about conservation. Diversity to me is just the background that you're from and who makes you, you. Differences in opinions, differences in beliefs, differences in outlook. Working with people who come from a diverse background and have their own experiences. That's what diversity is, is you learning from other people based on their background and their experiences. And that's how we grow as a wildlife field. When you bring different ideas together, there's a higher likelihood that you're able to better problem solve. So it just makes sense to account for all of that in my mind by incorporating diversity as best as possible um, at really 
every level. It's not even just what we can obtain from diverse groups, but it's also by providing someone with an opportunity, you're also helping them pursue their own passion. My biggest advice is get your feet wet, go explore and- Make yourself available and, and be willing to listen. You work through it and you let your, your science and your research and your work lead the way. Don't let one poor experience dictates the way that you approach the potential career path that you want to make for yourself. People are losing touch with nature. There's less nature around day by day. So we need to have a diverse set of people to connect with a diverse audience, to get people to all work towards the same goal of conservation in this field.